Assalamu alaikum. Today I'll be talking about the brain. Previously we talked about uh, the nerve and the nerve cells, synapses, how does the nerve impulse move through the nerve cells and so on. So today we will begin talking about the first part of the central nervous system which is the brain. So the brain weighs about uh, 350 grams at birth and it reaches about 1.4 kilograms in adults. And of course the brain is kept in the uh, skull. The skull also has another name which is the cranium. So this is where the brain is kept. So the brain is the major part or the um, most important part in the central nervous system as it gives orders which are transmitted to all parts of the body uh, through the spinal cord. Also it receives the nerve impulses through the spinal cord. Now inside the skull, uh, so this is the skull, the lining of the skull. Now, there are membranes which surround the central nervous system, they surround the brain and the spinal cord, so that they can prevent the friction between the uh, central nervous system and the bones. Now, in the skull, um, there are three meninges. First, there is one layer which is sticking to the skull, and this is called the dura mater. And we have another layer which is sticking to the brain and this one is called the higher matter and in between there is a transparent fluid which is called the arachnoid and the arachnoid has a function of preventing the mechanical trauma in the brain so that when the brain works too much uh, no trauma takes place and it also acts on separating the membrane from the, uh, the skull. Now the brain consists mainly of three major parts. First, the forebrain. Second is the midbrain. And third is the hindbrain. Now, the forebrain is the upper part, that part, and the hindbrain is the part below, and the midbrain is just this part. This is the midbrain, and we have to know that. Uh, there are 12 nerves which come out from the brain and these are called cranial nerves referring to the cranium or the skull where the brain is found. So first we'll talk about the forebrain. The forebrain consists of two big blobs separated by a big fissure. Uh, so from the front view it looks something like that and um, so the two lobes are separated by a big fissure and they are connected together by a big nerve bundle. Uh, so this nerve bundle consists of a large group of nerve fibers which connect between the two lobes. Each one of the two lobes is called a cerebral hemisphere. So this is a cerebral hemisphere, this is the back of the skull, so this shows the brain of somebody who is looking this way. Um, now each hemisphere consists of a large number of grooves and fissures as we can see the image of any brain and this of course increases the surface area of the brain. So, 
this part of the cerebral hemisphere is called the cortex. Now, the cortex of each cerebral hemisphere is divided into a group of lobes. So let's see. First, here we have the frontal lobe, that part, because it's found in the front. Then at this side here we have the parietal lobe. And this one is called the temporal lobe. And at the back, we have the occipital lobe. Because this is related to vision. And between the frontal and the parietal lobe, there is a fifth lobe called the island lobe. But it's immersed inside or between them, so it's not apparent from the side view of the brain. Now we'll talk about the functions of each part or each lobe of these. First, in the frontal lobe, we have here the voluntary functions like movement, and we have centers of memory and speech. Uh, in the parietal lobe, we have centers of senses related to skin life, that the sense of touch, sense of heat, coldness, and all of that. In the temporal lobe, we have um, centers of speech in addition to smell, and in the occipital lobe, we have the centers of vision. So now we talk about the cortex, that part. Then uh, we have the thalamus. and the hypothalamus. The thalamus is a very important center of coordination between all the uh, body functions except for the smell and the hypothalamus contains centers of different uh, body needs like satiety, like thirst, like hunger and it also contains centers of sleep. Now, the midbrain. The midbrain is the point of connection between the forebrain, the upper part, and the hindbrain, the lower part of the brain. Also, the midbrain contains centers of hearing and of vision. Also, it controls lots of reflexes as those relating to hearing and it controls the body equilibrium. Now, finally, the hindbrain. So the hindbrain consists of first the cerebellum, that part, the cerebellum. Now, the cerebellum is found at the posterior part of the brain and it consists of three lobes. Um, its function is to keep the balance and the equilibrium of the body in coordination with other muscles like the inner ear muscles. Uh, so when, when, that's why when somebody's hit at the back of his head, he may, he may lose his conscience because the cerebellum controls the equilibrium and the balance of the body. Also, if somebody's hit at the back of his head, he may lose his eyesight because the part which controls the eye vision is in the occipital lobe at the back of the brain. So if somebody's head hard on the back of his head, he may lose his eyesight. So this is the cerebellum. Next, we have the pons veroli and medulla oblongata. And then here we have the spinal cord. So apparently the pons veroli and medulla oblongata helps in the transmission of the nerve impulses to and from the spinal cord. Also, 
the medulla oblongata contains vital centers of the body which controls uh, respiration, swallowing, coughing, sneezing, vomiting, uh, control the actions of blood vessels like widening the blood vessels or um, the contraction of the blood vessels. So that was the brain. The next time we'll talk about the spinal cord and the children. And thank you for watching and see.